Hello and welcome to week two of the 2024 Baking Challenge. Now remember, we're baking on a budget, we're taking shortcuts and cutting corners, and we're altering recipes to suit allergies and picky eaters because we have both in this household. So for week two, we are doing, and hang on a minute because I have to think about this before I say it, tasty toaster tarts. Try saying that one three times fast. <laughs> It's, you know, it's a homemade take on Pop-Tarts, so a little healthier in my book, if you ask me. Of course, I don't have the back of the Pop-Tart box in front of me, but I have the ingredients laid out, and I can see that there's not a whole lot of sugar in these, so that's a win in my book. Although, let's not tell the little one that there's not a lot of sugar in here, because then he might change his mind about trying them. <laughs> All right, so let's get baking. All right, let's get baking. Now, this recipe calls for two cups of all-purpose flour. It also calls for a tablespoon of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, 16 tablespoons of cold butter. It has to be cold, because we're making a pie crust. Um, a large egg and a tablespoon of milk. Now, because there's only three of us in this house, I'm cutting the recipe in half and I had to make some, I had to make some interesting choices on how I was gonna do that. Because how do you cut a raw egg in half? You don't. What you can do though, is you can substitute a lot of different things for an egg. For instance, a fourth a cup of applesauce is the same as one large egg. Now, because I'm cutting the recipe in half, I have an eighth of a cup of applesauce. It's not gonna change the flavor all that much. This is unsweetened, regular applesauce. There's no cinnamon or anything in it, so you're not really gonna taste it. It's just gonna give us that egg substitute. I'm also making a few substitutions when it comes to the filling, but we can talk about that a little bit later. Let's get mixing our dough. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're whisk, gonna whisk together our flour. For you, it's two cups, unless you've cut it in half, and then it's one cup of flour our sugar, which is one tablespoon. I went ahead and just did the regular one tablespoon. And salt, which I didn't get out, so um, I'm just gonna use the salt shaker and uh, <laughs> kind of a little bit of sea salt in there. It's fine, it's not a big deal. Remember, chaos baking is what I do best. All right, let's get our whisk. And we are going to whisk those things together. Pretty easy so far. Now, here comes the not so easy part, butter. The butter should be cut into little pats of butter and you're gonna wanna cut it into your flour mixture. There's a couple different ways that you can do this. Sometimes I have problems with my hands um, if, especially during the winter, it's really hard for me to work with butter that has to stay cold. Now, there's several different tools that you can use. You can use, this is a, a pastry, what do they call these? It's on the tip of my tongue. Um, pastry cutter, that's what it is, it's just a pastry cutter. This one is just round wire. I really love this one. So I love the thumb rest on this one, it's easier for me to hold but this one has sharper metal. So this one cuts through butter really easy. If that's still too hard for you, you can grate your butter. It makes it a little smaller than it should be, but in a pinch, it'll do. A lot of times if my hands are very stiff and I'm having a very hard time with it, but I really need to bake something with cold butter, I'll get out my KitchenAid mixer and the shredder attachment that goes with it and I will stuff my butter inside of there and let it shred it for me. Um, I've done that a few times now. So my hands are working pretty well today. I'm gonna put my one stick of butter in here because I cut the recipe in half. If you did not cut the recipe in half, you're gonna have two sticks of butter. See, I did the math for you. One stick of butter is eight tablespoons. So you're going with 16. And what you're doing is you are just cutting this 
in here. Keep your knife handy because sometimes your butter is gonna get a little stuck on the back side and you just wanna, don't use your hands. <laughs> don't use your hands when you have a sharper pastry cutter like this, use something else. Um, you know, my, who was it? I, the older generations will just tell you to use your hands and that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't like the feeling of it under my fingernails. It, it icky to me. So I will use my pastry cutter just as much as I can. And we're gonna keep going on this. This is a time consuming process. It really is. You gotta scrape your butter off. And the recipe says pecan sized uh, pieces of butter. I've always heard pea size whenever I've made a uh, pie crust from scratch. So I'm just, I'm just gonna go with what looks right. Now, let's see here. Almost there. I still have a few large pieces, but we're working through it. Now I have heard of people that make their own pop tarts and I've always been intrigued with the idea. So when I saw this recipe on King Arthur's website and I have a pop tart aficionado in the house, I knew that this needed to go on the list. Okay, that looks pretty good. I've got a lot of pea-sized chunks and some pecan-sized chunks. So I'm just gonna, just gonna split the difference with the size here. Okay, let me show you what I got. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna scrape this pastry cutter again. I'm not sure that's what this is called. Now that I think about it, I think I'm making that up inside my own mind. And that's okay, I do that a lot. But I am gonna have to look that up later. Okay, now we add our egg and our milk. Or in this case, our applesauce. So I'm gonna add my applesauce in here. and the milk. And it's two tablespoons of milk if you haven't cut the recipe. If you did, it's just one. And we're gonna mix this in. You know, that's the thing whenever you're making any kind of dough is that it, dough can be temperamental. It's science, baking is science and chemistry, but is it dry out today? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it wet outside? All of those factors are going to have an impact on your dough. It's the same way with bread. It's the same way with pie crust. Um, any kind of dough that you make, you gotta eyeball it. If it doesn't look right, if it doesn't look like how it's supposed to look, you might need to add a little bit of water. Um, you may need to mix a little bit more. You may need to add a little bit of flour if it's too wet. Last week, I made the star bread dough in the bread machine, and I had to stop the bread machine's process twice because when I opened it, my dough was just soup. It was very soupy, so I had to add more flour. And I don't know if that's because something was just off in the environment or more likely because I was measuring while talking to the camera, it's a pretty good bet that I measured something incorrectly, which is why I measured everything out ahead of time today so that I wouldn't have any of those issues. <laughs> and so far it's going well, our dough is sticking together the way it should. Now you wanna work this quickly because it's going to have to go into the refrigerator. What we're gonna do, it's the pie crust, the butter has to stay cold when it goes into the oven in order to get that flaky crust. So you don't want melted butter. That's why you need to be able to see the chunks of butter in it. So this has worked. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna divide it into two rectangles, wrap it up, stick it in the fridge for a half hour, 
and then we'll come back and start rolling it out. I'll see you back in 30 minutes. The recipe says to let your dough rest for about 15 minutes so it can kind of get to room temperature. Don't touch it. <laughs> if you have hot hands, don't touch your dough. It's got the butter in it. You need the butter to stay mostly solid when it goes into the oven, okay? These are gonna have to rest again for another half hour before we put them in the oven. In the meantime, let's talk filling. Now the recipe has a cinnamon brown sugar filling, which is great. I didn't use brown sugar, I used regular sugar for mine. I don't know that there's a difference other than flavor, but I always have a jar of cinnamon sugar because I'm kind of a fiend. I'll put this on toast or a biscuit or, you know, right out of the bowl with a spoon on those days that you just need a little kick to get the day finished. Um, I have Nutella. <laughs> I'm just going to spoon Nutella on one of these and see what happens. Now we also have raspberry jam. The resident raspberry fan in the house is super excited about this. Now, if you follow the recipe on King Arthur's website, they're going to have you, um, melt this down, add cornstarch and water and thicken it up and all that. I'm just going to add some cornstarch to it because I don't feel like going through that. And we're going to cross our fingers and see what happens. Hope that it turns out. In the meantime, though, we have to roll out our dough. It needs to be nine by 12 sized, about an eighth of an inch thick. That is the other reason I love this rolling pin. So the ends come off. It's a little tedious, but you know, whatevs. And then these rings, like this is 1 16th. Here's my 1 8th. So I'm just gonna swap out my rings and that is going to tell me about how thick my dough should be. Well, let me get that switched out. This was another Amazon find. Love it. It came with the, the mat. <clears throat> and our bamboo stove. Though, so my stove top is underneath this. I will tell you, if you are ever building a custom kitchen, I wouldn't put a stove top in your island. Now we did, <laughs> we did not build this house. Um, and I didn't even, I mean, we still would have bought the house, but I hate having the stovetop in the island. It's, it's a real pain because I don't really have a fantastic space to roll out dough and things like that. I got to get creative and this, this is what we came up with. It works great though. It's got rubber feet so it doesn't slide around on the glass cooktop. All right. Eighth of an inch thick. I love this mat because it also has the measurements in inches and centimeters on it. I'm going to, these are supposed to be the same size. I'm terrible at that. So we're going to go with the big one, uh, flour your surface. I have this, you open it up, stick it in your flour, and then you just lightly squeeze to get the flour out. Lightly flour the surface. Now I can't see it anymore because I did too much. Shocking. I know. All right. Now I read the directions to this recipe several times. I don't quite understand. I think we're just making one big rectangle two times. Oh, I should really have done that on parchment paper. I wonder if it's too late. It's probably too late, but I'm going to stop the video and <laughs> cause I did not think this through cause I want to be able to, um, just put my parchment paper onto the baking sheet. So we're going to stop the video. We're going to get parchment paper. I am an ill prepared mess. So Scott is going to grab me a baking dish cause I already have flour all over my hands. Um, and <laughs> baking pan. Yes. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> Let's try this again. It's fine. Everything's fine. We're all fine here. Thank you. <laughs> He's used to my shenanigans. All right. Now I'm going to put my parchment paper where I can still see through it. I can still see my, um, my measurements. I'm going to flower my paper 
and my work surface because, you know, why not? All right. Let's see if I can make a rectangle. You know, I should probably turn it the other way to make, well, yeah. Boy, this is complicated. I have to map. Hold on a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine. So nine is 12. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine is 12, and then I can go down to 12 here. Let me flip my paper. Okay. That makes sense in my brain. Let's, let's see. Let's see if I can do this. Yep. Flower your rolling pin, people. Also, you could put your rolling pin in the fridge for a little while too, if you have a metal rolling pin. Um, my mom, I don't know if anybody else can, uh, was a child of the 80s and can remember this, but my mom had a clear plastic rolling pin. I wanna say it was from Tupperware and you would put water on the inside of it and then put it in the fridge and it would, um, this is not nine inches over here. Whew. Um, anyway, the rolling pin would stay cold so that it wouldn't melt your butter and things wouldn't stick to it quite as much. Okay. Well, that's not a rectangle. Uh, I'm not going to get... Oh, wait a minute, I cut the dough in half. You're rolling yours out to nine by 12. Mine is gonna be considerably smaller. I didn't math for that in my head, so we're just gonna go with it at this point. Chaos baking. <laughs> All right, I, am, I have my little ruler. I'm getting a bigger one of these, but this one has been in my baking drawer for years now um, because I have to measure things. I can't just eyeball it. So what I am gonna do though, is I'm gonna square up my dough here Uh, which you're going to have to do when you're rolling out your nine by 12 size. Um, you want it to be a, a rectangle. So roll it out and then even up the sides. And then you, once you even it up, you're going to do three by three. So you're going to score it three times, um, length and width and you'll end up with your nine squares. Um, for me, let's see, we're gonna do, we're gonna go with four. So we're gonna go with uh, half and half, and that is gonna give me my four, <laughs> my four Pop-Tarts. Or Tasty Toaster Tarts, right. And you're just gonna lightly score. You don't wanna go all the way through. Okay, now for the filling. One of these is gonna have the cinnamon sugar. One is going to have raspberry. And the other two are gonna have Nutella because I know that Nutella is gonna be a winner. I did not put my apron on today. So we're just, we're just going with it. All right. Okay, cinnamon sugar. Grab a spoon, and it says to just kind of heap it in the middle. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Try not to make too much of a mess here. You don't wanna get it close to your edges because your edges are gonna need to be sealed. Oh, I forgot a step. No, 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 don't do this yet. Don't, don't do this yet. You need to, this is why, yep, okay. Um, if you're doing the cinnamon sugar, especially, or just anything, do an egg wash over the top of this before you add your filling. It's a little too late for me to do that now. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, that was a little bit of a mess up. Now, follow the directions for the cornstarch if you're doing a jam or jelly filling. I am not doing that. I am just going to add some cornstarch and some jam and cross my fingers and see what happens. 
next because but look I got the smuckers that's a good jam add this in here and really mix it up yeah all right sure we'll call that done put it right it says i can't remember what it says how much to put in there um but i'm gonna probably be overfilling these because that just seems like the thing to do for me and now the nutella on the last two squares boy oh boy you know they may not look good by the time i'm done but I'm sure that they're gonna taste great. And isn't that what matters most in baking? I say, because it's not gonna look good. <laughs> it's okay. We're all learning together and we all make mistakes. It's like Bob Ross says, there's no accidents, just happy little trees. And these are definitely gonna be some happy little trees. Okay. This one's done. I got carried away with the flour, so I'm just gonna kinda scrape a lot of that off of this parchment paper. And then I'm gonna put my parchment paper onto my baking sheet. All right, here we go. All right, that's on the baking sheet. Now, we're gonna repeat the process minus the filling. Uh, we're just going to roll this out, our other dough, and then we're going to cover it over. We're going to cover the, we're going to roll this out, cut it the same size, put it on top of what we just did, seal the edges, cut it, seal again, crimp the edges with a fork like you're making a pie or a turnover um, or a calzone. And... Then we have to stick them back in the fridge for another like 30 minutes, I think. Okay, <laughs> it's getting interesting in here. It wouldn't be baking if I didn't mess it up. And that's okay. That's just how we do in this house. I'm gonna try to get a little bit more of a rectangle. If you use applesauce instead of egg, um, like I did, you're gonna see like bits and pieces of the applesauce in there. That's normal. That's normal. If you've ever seen the way that applesauce is made, you'll know. That's normal. There's always bits and pieces of apple that don't get completely ground up. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, I don't think that this is nearly as wide as the other one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna strategically add a little bit of dough here and there and try to uh, get this to press out a little bit more. See if I can't make this work a little bit. You know, that's the great thing about baking. It's not always gonna go right and you have to just improvise sometimes. See, this is looking a little bit correct with size. You know what, maybe I'll just measure what I've got over here and see. All right, it's about six inches by about 10. So that's right. And then by about 10, so five, five. Let's see. Sure, sure, this will be great. This will be fantastic. <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything's awesome. Okay. Fingers crossed. Let's uh, let's move some of this around so we can get our tray up here. Whew. 
All right. Now the last time I tried to move dough, it ripped. If you were tuning in last week for the star bread, I, I ripped that to shreds accidentally several times. Um, in my defense, something always goes wrong whenever I'm doing anything. <laughs> so, okay, let's see. It mostly fits. I can, I can stretch it out a little bit where needed. And here we go. So it says to press down to seal around the filling. So you can use your fingers. I said to use a chopstick if you wanted to. I've never heard that, but cool. Totally awesome. Okay. Now we're gonna cut it. We gotta cut it. Don't cut your filling. <laughs> All right. The good news is that I can see my filling through here. Not, not the cinnamon sugar one, but I can see the raspberry filling and I can see the Nutella. Um, another good way to cut this, see, because my knife just dragged some of the dough. Um, another really good way to cut this would be a pizza cutter. I've done that before. I've used a pizza cutter on dough. Now I'm gonna move these apart a little bit. I'm going to grab a fork with my really doughy hands and we're going to crimp the edges. Now doing the egg wash on top of your original layer is what would 100% keep these from separating. Uh, since I didn't do that, I'm anticipating that my filling is going to leak out. So follow the directions. Don't skip ahead because you might get confused and then you end up <laughs> messing things up, which is okay. It's okay to make mistakes. Everybody does. And if they say that they don't, they're a liar absolutely lying. Everybody makes mistakes and there isn't anything that you can't come back from. And I will tell you that as a professional mistake maker, you can always fix it. You may have to start over sometimes, but at least try not to make the same mistake twice. All right, I'm really pressing this in there. Okay, the other thing you have to do is you have to stab holes in the top layer of your crust. This is going to let the steam out and hopefully keep your edges from exploding and your filling coming out. It's not unusual for your filling when you're making a pie, which is basically what these are. These are just hand pies. Um, it is not unusual for your filling to come out of your vents. That's what these are. These are vents. And I see now I didn't get it all the way through. I'm just gonna cut. I'm just gonna use my knife and really, really drag in there a little bit. All right, now. These are gonna go into the fridge for 30 minutes. You're gonna to wanna to preheat your oven to 350, I want to say. I'm looking. Yeah, 350 degrees. Stick these in the oven. We'll be back in a half hour to bake them together. And cross your fingers, because I did a whole lot of mistakes here. See you back in a half hour. All right, it's been 30 minutes. I just pulled these out of the fridge, nice and cold. Remember the butter has to be cold before it goes in the oven. That makes the nice flaky crust. 
If you want, you can sprinkle some sugar on here. The recipe did not call for an egg or milk wash, so I'm not gonna do it, but you can if you want. I don't think it would hurt anything. Uh, these are going to go into the oven for 30 to 35 minutes, which seems like an excessive amount of time to me. So I'm probably gonna check on them in like 15 minutes. So you want them to be a light golden brown. And when we pull them out, they should be light golden brown, 30 to 35 minutes according to the recipe. And we're gonna put them on wire racks to cool. Now there's icing. If you want to ice them, it's powdered sugar and either water, milk, or heavy whipping cream. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put icing on mine. Sprinkles too, because we're a household that loves sprinkles, but you have to let them cool all the way first. All right, into the oven, crossing our fingers. Let's see what we end up with. Hey Google, set a 15 minute timer. Okay, All right, we'll check back and I'm gonna check mine in 15 minutes. You may just wanna follow the recipe and see where 30 minutes gets you. See you back in a half hour. All right, it did take 30 minutes. I was wrong, I don't know everything. It just seemed like a lot, but I think I'm coming off of that Christmas cookie baking where nothing is in over 15 minutes. That's okay. So, pulling them out of the oven. I am shocked that none of my filling escaped, which means I either didn't put enough filling in or um, I put the right amount. So, there we go. We've got nice golden brown, lightly golden, pastries. I'm going to put that down on my hot plates and reach over the chili. We're having chili for dinner. I did not make it. Scott did. He's kind of a chili snob. So I'm going to put these right here. They are going to need to cool down completely. Uh oh. I need to put these in the exact spaces that they're in now so that I know what they are. We have raspberry, cinnamon sugar, and Nutella. Mine are awfully flat looking. I really feel like maybe I should have added more filling and kind of um, spread it out a little. That's okay, I'll know for next time because I'm making these again. They smell great. They have to cool completely before we can put the icing on, but let's go ahead and make the icing. So the icing recipe calls for a cup and a half of powdered sugar and one and a half to two tablespoons of water or milk or heavy whipping cream. I'm going with some milk here and I'm, I'm just winging it. I'm not measuring anything. I have my Pokemon on too. Let's see. Mixing, mixing, mixing. I might have added too much milk. It's too early to tell. My teeny tiny teaspoon. <laughs> no, this looks fine. Everything's fine. And then if you have sprinkles in the house and you feel like being fancy, you can add sprinkles on top Okay, it's awfully lumpy. I need to mix more, mix more. Um, I don't know what kind of sprinkles you would use in January, but since we're so close to Christmas and I never did make those sugar cookies, I'm just gonna use leftover Christmas sprinkles. I made a lot of cookies for Christmas, but I did not make the, uh, the sugar cookies. This is a lot more icing than I'm gonna need. That's okay. That's okay, everything's fine. These are not going to be anywhere cool for until, I don't know, like 20 minutes. You can let them cool a little bit. Um, you can probably pop them in the fridge too. As long as you do it on a wire rack like this, you can't set them on something flat and then pop them in the fridge because then they're gonna sweat and the bottoms are gonna get really soggy. But I think if you had airflow, 
If you had these sitting up on a wire rack, you could probably do it and get away with it and be okay. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm totally distracted. The, the kitty cat's water fountain just started gurgling, which means it needs to be refilled. We go through a lot of water, four cats and a dog. Okay, so here's the consistency of our icing. It's probably thinner than it really should be. Um, I can add some more sugar or not. I'm kind of at the point where I just want to be done with this, which happens sometimes. So now it's just a waiting game. And then when these are cooled off completely, I'm going to drizzle my icing over, top it with some very festive, if not a little wrong season sprinkles. That's okay. It was this or Halloween, and I'm a big fan of either one, but I think the family will appreciate the Christmas sprinkles just a little bit more. I'll catch back up with you when our toaster, tasty toaster tarts are cooled off. And we're back with cooled tarts. Now I did put mine in the fridge, but I put them in on the cooling rack and they are not soggy at all. These are pretty perfect. I'm actually pretty excited about this. So I'm gonna put icing and sprinkles on this. I put down a piece of parchment paper underneath my cooling rack so that that way I don't have to clean up icing. And I did end up adding some more sugar to my icing because it was just a little too thin. So, you can drizzle, you can drop, you can dip. I'm not going to try to make these pretty because I'll just fail. If you want to try to make them pretty, I suggest you put the uh, icing in some kind of a, um, like a squeeze bottle. That would work. You could put icing in a squeeze bottle and that way you have a little bit more control than I do with my tiny teaspoon. That's okay. It's okay. It's okay because they're gonna taste good. <laughs> That's all that matters. That they taste good. And maybe not be too messy. This icing will dry. Um, I don't know how long it'll take to dry because mine is still a little on the thin side. That's okay. Totally okay. Just gonna keep going. <laughs> Just going to keep throwing my icing on here and then a couple spots where it has rolled off. See, I could absolutely see, I wish I had done this when my older kids were younger because that would be cool. That would be really neat to like take a Sunday morning and make a big batch of these and let everyone put their own fillings in. And then you could freeze them in there and everybody gets like their own gallon bag of their customized tasty toaster tarts. I still have to think about it before I say it. I'm really dragging out this icing, aren't I? That's okay. Um, before you put your sprinkles on, you're going to want your icing to spread however it's going to. Because if you put your, if I were to put my sprinkles on right now, they would just fall off, and then I wouldn't have any. So I would have wasted my sprinkles, and we don't waste sprinkles. That's never. And I mean, watch how much icing you make. I have made too much for the for the amount that I have here. It's okay, not a big deal, but we try not to waste. So, yeah. So something that you could do if you wanted to be a little bit extra and you had some extra time, instead of cutting, you could get like a big, like a donut cutter and you could do circles um, or you could cut them into narrower strips. You wouldn't get as much filling, but then you could do like dipping instead, like, like Dunkaroos. Does anybody remember Dunkaroos or is that, is that still a thing? Um, so that's, that's absolutely something that you could do. All right, my icing has spread out. I'm going to put on some sprinkles here. See, I didn't even open all of these. I used green sprinkles. That was it. 
<laughs> we're just gonna, there's no rhyme or reason to sprinkles. You just do what feels good. All right. Now, you're supposed to wait for the icing to dry, but I would like to get the kitchen cleaning up. So I am going to try one right now. And I'm gonna go for my cinnamon sugar one, which should be this one right here. I'm the only cinnamon sugar fan in the house. All right. Like this. Okay, fingers crossed. I'm gonna use my fork because it's gooey and ooey. Ooey and gooey. There's not much filling in here. I definitely should have added more filling. I'm getting it all over my hands. There's a little bit more filling on this side. So put more in than I did. Okay. Yep. It was very much a homemade Pop-Tart. Um, it's good. It's messy, <laughs> but this is good. There's a few things that I would do differently. I would absolutely do the brown sugar cinnamon instead of the granulated sugar cinnamon that I have on here. I think that that brown sugar would melt up and be a little more ooey and gooey. Also the egg wash on the inside, totally important. Don't skip that part like I did. Um, so read the directions. <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know that I would go with an icing on it. It's very sweet, maybe a little overly sweet, but I'm glad that I made these. I'm glad that I tried this recipe. I'm glad that I made some mistakes and learned from them. And this is definitely something that I'm gonna make again. I cannot wait for him to cut into this jam filled one because that one has got a nice dome on it. Um, the Nutella ones aren't, don't, I don't think there's gonna be much filling in those. So if you think you put just enough in, put a little bit more, maybe spread it out some. Remember, you're gonna need to leave edges and uh, I left too much edge but it's pie crust it's a nice it's a nice dough it's a nice flaky it is flaky it's definitely flaky so yeah okay that's fantastic we're done so this is the end of our week two of the 2024 baking challenge the tasty toaster tarts every time I have to think about that every time. I am really glad that you joined me and I hope that you will come back next week for week three and I'm not gonna tell you what we're making until it's time. So check back in, hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video or you just wanted a good laugh, that's fine too. As always, you will find the links to King Arthur's recipe as well as any of the items that I used today. Um, that rolling pin, that's super duper nice. Uh, check in on social media too, because I will give you a sneak peek on Instagram about what next week will be. I'll drop an ingredient list. Um, and I hope that you had fun and enjoyed the chaos. And I hope that your tasty toaster tarts turned out better than mine. <laughs> I'll see you next week. <laughs>